So today's video is a sad one. Sam Ash is closing down. So hello everybody and welcome to a new video and welcome to my channel where we talk about everything music from death metal to queen and everything in between. So let me address the elephant in the room and the title of the video. A lot of guitar channels are titling their videos Sam Ash is closing down and the truth is they are not. Sam Ash as a company is not going under but they are however closing down 18 stores and that sucks including my old friend store 33. Miami Lakes. And sadly, I can't honestly say I am surprised, and I'll tell you why. Having worked for Sam Ash for about seven years from 2006, 2007, all the way to 2013, 2014, and rising through the ranks all the way from salesman to senior guitar department manager, I can tell you there were a lot of things that pointed to this demise. Now, of course, I'm gonna draw from my own experience and my own store, but a lot of things will apply to different stores. First of all, let's talk about the history of Sam Ash and how they expanded and how fast they actually expanded. Sam Ash Music is actually turning 100 this year. It was actually founded in 1924 by Sam Ash. And for the longest time, they only had the one store up in New York. Now, Sam Ash, the founder of Sam Ash Music, actually had two children, Paul and Jerry. Paul and Jerry actually wanted to expand the brand Sam Ash and open up some other stores, but Sam Ash wanted none of it. And come to think of it, in hindsight, he might have been right. And here's why. As soon as Sam Ash passed away, they started to expand. Now, of course, in the beginning, they only expanded within the region. And that was a good thing because they actually knew the market, the demographic, you know, their clientele, and they were basically in control of the company, or at least they could be in control of the company. But ironically, the very thing that made Sam Ash stores great also bit them in the ass. And that is the fact that Sam Ash has always been family owned and operated. Now, over the years, they started to expand, but it was controlled. They would actually research the place they wanted to expand to. They would see whether or not it was worth it for them to move into. If they had enough demand, maybe the supply was short and they would start out with a small store and then of course grow if needed. But in the early 2000s, something would happen that would change Sam Ash's history forever. GC or Guitar Center has always been the number one musical instrument retailer in the US and probably the world. And their closest competitor was Mars Music. Mars Music was actually founded in 1996 by Mark Bagelman, who was a guitar player, but was more famously known for being the former president of Office Depot. So of course he took that Office Depot mentality, experience and all of his business strategies and put them into Mars Music with a very aggressive expansion strategy that made them go from one store in Fort Lauderdale all the way up to 49 stores in 20 different states. All of that within six years. That's ridiculous. And their stores were awesome. It took the music retail business to a higher standard. But sadly, their numbers just didn't add up. So between the over expansion and the new ways to do business online, Mars Music filed for bankruptcy in 2002. Enter Sam Ash. Since Mars Music was basically liquidating a lot of their stores and their stock and their furniture, Sam Ash saw this as a great opportunity to expand the brand. And they did. They bought out a lot of Mars Music stores. And all of a sudden, Sam Ash went from being a small, family-owned and operated musical instrument retail chain to a huge brand. And in a very short period of time, they actually went from having seven stores to having close to 50 stores and being the second biggest retail in the music business. Suddenly, GC and that number one spot was in an arm's reach. But there was another huge problem. These weren't the 90s anymore. Now, fast forward to 2006, 2007, that's when I started working there. And I can tell you there were a lot of things they needed improvement on. First of all, because of the fact that they were family owned and operated, everything we did all the way in Miami Lakes, Florida, had to go through corporate, which was all the way up in New York. So any decisions that we needed to make had to first go through them. So that, of course, created a delay. It was also a hassle and they just didn't know the market as well as we did. Store 33, Miami Lakes, the store I worked in, was mainly pro audio because of all the churches and all of the events we had and also being in Miami, a lot of DJs, a lot of techno music, but we still got pretty much the same stock as every other store in the chain. Instead of favoring and growing the pro audio department, they actually spread out the money in the budget the same way they did the Manhattan store, the North Carolina store, the California stores, the Nashville stores, and the New York stores. And that just didn't work. We had a lot of money tied up in like drums and sheet music and orchestra, departments that weren't really bringing in a lot of money into the stores. Wow, it's pouring down. And speaking of budget, Store 33 was actually the biggest music retail store in the world at 43,000 square feet. That's a ridiculous amount of real estate. And that's a ridiculous amount of white wall to cover. It is frowned upon to have white walls, which means that you need to fill up those walls as much as possible. 
But having the same budget as some of the much smaller stores, it was really hard for us to fill up the walls. So what we had to do in order to fill up the walls was to have a lot more guitars. How do you have more guitars with the same budget? You get cheaper guitars. So you would walk into the store and you would see a lot of Squire guitars, a lot of Epiphone guitars, a lot of the low budget LTDs, the Washburns, and just a few of the high end guitars. And being in Miami, which is a very touristy place, we needed to have those guitars handy because we only got one shot at that customer. A customer from Brazil, Argentina, or any other place would walk into the store and want to buy a Gibson Les Paul Custom, but sometimes we just didn't have one in stock and we would have to send them over to a different store, maybe Margate, maybe Dolphin, and lose that sale that way. Or they would just go to our nearest competitor, which was Guitar Center, and just buy it there at the Highlander Beach store for the same amount of money and like 20 minutes away. So yeah, that was really crappy, but of course, even though we tried to explain that many times to corporate, they just wouldn't get it. And also, a lot of times, a customer would actually come in and they would want a guitar we did have, but they would want it brand new in a box. And we, because of our budget, we'd only have the one that was on the wall. So there goes another sale. Another huge problem we actually inherited from Mars Music was the fact that the stores were way too big, thus needing a bigger staff. At one point, I even remember having Saturday morning meetings with about 30 people. That's a lot of people for a store. But even though the sales didn't really back up the number of salesmen we had, you needed to have them for security. At any typical moment in the guitar department itself, you needed to have at least two people that were working the registers. You also needed a third person to stay in the acoustic guitar room, probably a fourth person for the bass room. And that's not counting the fact that as a manager, I had to take care of inventory. So sometimes I was away from the registers. I couldn't really take care of customers. Also, there's always somebody at lunch and you had to go back to the huge warehouse to find the stuff that we're actually buying. And of course, somebody's off that day. So that's six people right there just for the guitar department. And honestly, the numbers just didn't add up. A lot of times there were six people in the guitar department and no customers, or maybe one customer, or maybe even two customers, but one of them was actually looking for the restroom. But the worst part about it was the fact that they actually paid minimum wage plus commission. But your commission was actually based off of your base salary. So let's say you actually got paid $240 a week. You would actually have to make $240 worth of commissions for you to actually start adding to that base. You had to break that threshold. But that was actually done monthly. So if you had a week when you only had like $100 worth of commissions, then you already owed them $140. So on the next week, you had to make $240 plus the $140 that you were missing out from last week. So a lot of times by week two, because of the fact that we had so many salesmen, a lot of people would just know that they were not going to meet that quota. So they would just give up and start over on the next month. I mean, there was no real incentive to sell. So yeah, having so many big stores really hurt the company. And there were also a lot of other things that as salesmen we had to take care of, like the gig ready program, which was actually good, but we had to make sure that every guitar that went on the wall was actually restrung and set up and that it was maintained every two months. So every two months that guitar had to get new strings and get set up again, which might have been fine for a lot of the stores, but we just had so many guitars, it was really, really complicated to actually keep up with it. Let alone the fact that most of them were really cheap guitars and considering the time and the strings, you were putting in way too much money into guitars that weren't really worth it or needed it. And don't get me started on used gear. And don't get me wrong, used gear is my jam. I love used stuff. But here's the deal. We had to take in used guitars, used amplifiers, etc. And we had to clean them up, make sure they worked, put new strings on them, set them up take pictures of them and then we needed to email corporate so that they could put it up on the website and then once it finally sold we had to let corporate know that they actually sold so they could take it down and because of the fact that that one person in corporate was taking care of all of the used gear for all 50 stores it would take forever so a lot of times people would come in looking for a guitar that had been sold for months and that's bad which takes me back to what I believe to be the thing that broke Sam Ash. And that is the fact that, of course, again, being family owned and operated, everything had to go through Paul Ash, who was an old man at this point. And between you and I, he was kind of losing it too. And bless his soul, he just couldn't or didn't want to embrace the whole internet thing. Every time all of us complained about the fact that the Sam Ash website was the worst website of all the music business retailers, he just brushed it off as it wasn't important. We also firsthand 
the beginning and growth of websites like Musician's Friend, Sounds, Sweetwater, even GuitarCenter.com was doing great. But he just wouldn't see it and nothing would get done without his approval. Anyway, sadly, Paul Ash passed away in 2014, so the company was taken over by the third generation of Ashes, but they also struggled to keep up with technology. Now, with the passing of Sammy Ash last year, we actually moved on to the fourth generation of Ashes. And now finally, I think they're actually going to address this and we're actually going to see a lot of changes coming into Sam Ash. So am I worried for Sam Ash's future? No, not really. I do believe sadly because a lot of people are going to lose jobs that this was the right move to make. What I am surprised about though is the fact that they're actually going to close down store number seven, which was the Manhattan store, which was actually the highest or second highest selling Sam Ash store. They we're always fighting for the number one spot between Dolphin Mall and Manhattan. So I think it probably has to do with the fact that, you know, rent is so expensive in Manhattan, but I see them maybe relocating in the near future. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you've made it this far, please drop me a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel like a man. And if you've got an extra minute or two, check out one of these two videos. I'll see you guys next time. Pat out. Metal on dudes.